Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. Your man's in the front row, in the middle there. Thanks. Big line? Yeah, about 22. I'll see you later. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Martin. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. How are you? Just fine. Been here long? Uh, not long, no. Do you think you've got any of the men? Uh, no way being sure until you point them out. We picked up three or four on suspicion, past records, and close to your description. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call off the number. Please be prompt with your questions or identification. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the washroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. All right, boys, keep it moving. Right over here to the end of the stage. Now turn and face front, hands to your side. When I call out your name and number, step out, face the room, talk up so everybody can hear you. All right, number one, Louis Foster, robbery. Where do you live, Louis? Hundred and eight and a half, North Lincoln Boulevard. What's your business? A uh, caddy. You drive a cab? Ah, I used to. How long ago did you used to? I used to a year ago. I got canned. I can't jockey cabs no more. Lousy company blackball me. You own a car? Uh, no, sir. Any weapons on you when you were arrested? No, sir. Anybody with you? Yeah. A guy named uh, Bernie or something. Bernie what? Bernie, uh, I'm even sure of that. I don't know his last name. He, he's standing right back there. Bernie King, number four. How long you known him? I met him uh, uh, three, four days. A bar. We got drinking, and that's when we cooked up the job. Okay, step back. Number two, William Small, assault. Where do you live, Bill? 333 South 103rd Street. What's your business? Bartender. Where do you work? The Domino, over on Jefferson, 46 West. He beat up a customer pretty bad. Yeah, he got out of line. I asked him to shut up. He don't shut up. I take it for about an hour, and then I don't take it no more. You ask him to leave? Sure, like always. Guys get hanged up. First, I ask him to leave. I'm pretty big. Usually, they don't give me no lip. This guy, he's pretty big, too. He didn't want to leave? Nah. He gets very insulted. Starts calling me names he ain't gotten around to until then. I try to hustle him. Gentle, but I mean it, see? He don't hustle. Instead, he clobbers me one with his elbow. Right in the kisser, he clobbers me. So what else? I go to work. I rough him up good. I'm mad now, see? I rarely rough him up. You hit him with the table. Well, he had a bar stool. I had to hit him with something or he brains me for keeps. Okay, step back. Sure. A soft yet. He don't get nothing, huh? Just a concussion. Number three, Homer Miller, robbery. Any of the men up there? Uh, Where do you no, no, no. 3.9 South sure. L. What's your business? I ain't been working lately. I used to be a steeplejack. How long have you lived here? Well, uh, six, seven years. I come from Detroit. Hi, boy. Hello, man. That coffee hot? Yeah. Martin didn't make an identification, huh? Uh-uh. He's down looking at the mug file again. Yeah. Thanks. Well, you'd sure think with four men to find, he ought to be able to spot one of them. I don't know. Maybe they haven't got any records. They, they were pretty professional about it. We didn't even get a print. Yeah. Yeah, but look at the M.O. Four guys go into a theater, stick it up, one lookout. The other three guys go up to the manager's office. We've had theater hold up, sure, but not four guys working like this. Young guys. Yeah, Martin says the three who came into his office couldn't have been over 22 or 3. And nobody in our files even comes close to the descriptions. Out of town? Mm, maybe. 
Maybe the first job. They acted like cowboys and Indians. Martin says he thought they were kidding until he saw the guns. Well, what have you done? Staked out the theaters. That... Guthrie. Yeah? Yeah? The Lincoln? Okay. Let's go. Something hot. Those four guys just held up the Lincoln Theater. Fitch was on stakeout and tried to stop him. Tried? He down one, but got shot up doing it. He's on the way to the hospital. How bad? Pretty bad. Fitch. No report yet. He's in the operating room. Who was the doctor? The Gerson. Fitch caught one in the chest and one in the right leg. Family been... Uh... Yeah, they're in this room. What about the other one? No identification on him. Before he passed out, he said his name was Martinelli. Fitch really blew him up. Slug went in the right hand, up the arm, right through his body. Funny, huh? Up the arm like that and right through? Oh, uh, uh, here's Dr. Lundigan. He operated on Martinelli. Gentlemen... I uh, suppose you're the police. That's right, Doctor. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Sergeant Gray. How are you, Doctor? How do you do? How's Martinelli? I can't say just yet. He hasn't regained consciousness since we removed the bullet. We were hoping to question him. Well, you can wait in the room if you like. Thanks. It's uh, 304, right there. Well, let's go in. Well, hmm? I just came from the theater to cash. Uh, so come on in the room and tell me. Huh? Uh, we're police, nurse. Dr. Lundigan said we could wait in here. Well, all right, if he said so. I'll get another chair. Thanks. Please try to talk quiet. Okay. He's working pretty hard at it. Yeah. What do you got, Quine? Now the cashier at the theater saw the car, and all she knew was it's blue sedan. Not much, but I put on an APB, and descriptions tell it all the way around. It has to be the same bunch of you. How's Fitch? He's still out, too. Uh, you want me to stick around? Yeah, yeah, for a while. Why, you got a date? No, no, I got nothing to do. Here you are. Thanks. You better call a doctor. That is Dr. Lundigan to come to 304. that, huh? Yes. Coin, stay and get fingerprints on him. If anything comes up, you can get me at home. Let's go, man. Looking good. Oh, not bad for just Sunday labor. Well, good night. I'll see you in the morning. Want me to pick you up? No, uh, I want to leave the car to be serviced. Say hello to Molly. Right. Night. Night. Uh, what? Get his food, Luke. Yeah. Johnny, does these lights. Get the car started. Come on. Let's get him out of here. Heavy, ain't he? There's a new dollar day on CBS. Mystery fans know that can mean only one thing. Edmund O'Brien as yours truly, Johnny Dollar. The insurance sleuth with a dynamite-loaded expense account, formerly heard Saturdays, now will be heard Wednesday nights on most of these same CBS stations. Johnny Dollar celebrates his move tomorrow night by solving the Malcolm Wish matter, a startling disappearance case. Don't see nobody. Okay, drag him out. Hey, 
Hey, but nobody ever kidnapped no cop before. All right, all right. Get him down the shaft. Okay. Where do you want him? Just dump him. All right. He's coming around. Give him time. Sapped him pretty good. Go to check. Uh... Yeah. Oh. <sighs> Don't feel so good, huh, Cap? You want us to get some water or something and dump it on him? Or well, you should just go sit down and shut your face. I'll take care of the cop. Okay, okay. Big deal. How about it, Cap? Feel like sitting up? Uh, oh, sure, you can sit up, so I'll sit up. <laughs> he don't look so good. You messed him up. You needed messing. Come on, Cap. <laughs> take it easy. Why? <laughs> Wake up. Okay, okay. I'll sit there. What's going on? You got bean. No. <laughs> you got bean good. Shut up. Okay, okay. Here, cop. Have a drink of water. No, thanks. <laughs> well, you should have. Now oh, you got yourself all wet. You punk. Who do you think you're talking to? You! <laughs> You, I'm talking to any way I want to. <laughs> he just don't get it. Big, stupid cop. Just don't get it. Like to know about it, big, stupid cop. Want to know why you got your skull split, huh? Who are you? Martinelli. Oh. Tony Martinelli. One of your stinking cops shot my brother. You get it now? Yeah. Anybody ever kidnapped a cop before, huh? Anybody ever kidnapped a lieutenant, a big, dumb lieutenant, huh? <laughs> You gotta learn to answer when I ask you something. That theater job, your first stick up, Tony? What makes you think so? Because you pulled another one three days later. So what? Amateur. Smart hood would figure we'd stake out the theaters. I'm not smart, huh? Not a bit. Smart enough to get 3,000. I told you to keep your face shut. All right. Cross ditch. Hey, he's with us, huh? Boys are making a big mistake. Tell us how we're making a big mistake, huh? None of us got records in this town. Who's going to find us? They'll find you. Know the penalty for kidnapping in this state? They ain't going to find us, cop. My brother ain't going to say nothing. And if we got you along, even if they do find us, they ain't going to do nothing. I'm getting hungry. I'll go out and get some sandwiches. Okay, what do you want? Hey, liver wish. Just get some step on us. Okay. Yeah, how about the copper? Oh, he ain't hungry. Get me some hamburgers. Okay. You know what we're going to do, Lieutenant? What? We're going to wait right here to see if my brother's going to be all right. Then we'll leave in a state. You're going to be sitting right in the front seat all the way. What if your brother doesn't get all right? You still sit in the front seat until we get clear. Hi. Hi, where's Ben? He's not in yet. I was just swiping some coffee. Well, swipe me some. What, uh, what'd you find out on Martinelli? Here. Oh, thanks. Uh, we ran down the fingerprints. Got them through the Army. Full name, Julio Martinelli. 26 years old. Born in this country, Detroit. Don't know how long he's lived here. No record at all. What's Detroit say? I'm waiting on it now. Just heard from the Army an hour ago. He's got a brother, Tony Martinelli. Family deceased. What kind of an Army record does he have? Lousy. Both he and his brother are always in trouble. No overseas duty. Stationed in California. I wonder where Ben is. Oh, are you supposed to pick him up? No, no. Oh, he's probably still having his car service. Hey, here's a report from Detroit. Both the Martinellis have records. Minor offenses, but habitual. Both serve small-time raps a dozen times. Any report on the blue sedan? No, and here's something else. Detroit sent back these covering the descriptions of the other two guys with the Martinellis. Martinelli's brother, Tony, is essentially to be the guy who ran the stick-ups, and these two guys have been picked up with him a couple of times. Luke Johnson... Charlie Wren. Yeah, according to their records, they never pulled off anything this big, just petty stuff in the past. Well, you better have these circulated. Right. Uh, where's Ben? I don't know. He sure is late. Yeah, yeah, 
look. All our pictures on the front page. We better get out of here. What's the matter? Julie's dead. Yeah. Died last night, nine o'clock, before we got you. You know it, huh? Uh-huh. You know what happens to you, cop? You know it, aren't you, cop? You know what I'm gonna do to you. Only look, we're in it up to here now. You can't. Shut up. Shut up. Yeah, but they know who's... Shut up. So what if they know? This big, dumb cop is gonna get us off. And I'm gonna blow his brains out. Tony, you... I'm still running this thing. You're gonna do what I tell you to do. We stay right here tonight. You want to get out of there? We're killing the cops. You know what I was planning. But they know who we are. I'll kill them. After we get clear, I'll kill them. You don't have to do nothing to do it. I'll kill them all by myself, and I love it. Here I sent Carger over. Here, it's 3.30 and no word yet. Ben's never stayed away without at least checking in. He didn't even go into the garage. Uh, to check the hospital. Oh, we would have gotten some word by now. I covered the morgues. Oh, or nothing like that. Well, how do you know? I at least got a... Fu- Grab. What's the address? Okay. Asher thinks maybe he's got an identification on one of the men. Cafe down on River Street, 105 East. Do you want me to come along? No. No, you'd uh, you'd better stay here until Carger checks in about Ben. Let me know as soon as you hear anything, huh? Identified this one, Luke Johnston. Positive? He's pretty sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. This guy in the picture came in this morning and got some sandwiches. To take out? To take out, yeah. Liverwurst and six hamburgers. I remember because I ain't had too many customers today. Did you notice whether he was in a car or not? Oh, no. Well, I mean, I noticed. I seen him walk away across the street that way. You see, we stay open all night, and he was my first customer. He walked that way right down there. See, what's he doing? Is he a killer, maybe? The river's down that way. Well, sure, probably lived down there by it. He kind of looked funny. I thought it looked funny when he first came in, like he was a gangster, maybe. Huh? <laughs> Looks just like a kid in this picture. Oh, sure, yeah. He's young. He's about my boy's age, maybe. But, oh, looked tough and shifty. Oh, you know the type. He got coffee and sandwiches. Uh, where's your phone? Uh, it's right there. It's a nickel. <laughs> This is Greb. Let me talk to Waldo. Hello, Captain. We got an identification on Luke Johnson. I'll need every available man to cover this area, at least 15. It's my guess Johnson is holed up somewhere within walking distance of the river. Yes, sir. I'll keep in touch. Yeah, I know. Okay. Oh, the address is 105 East River. Right. Asher, you work with me. Right. There's something big, yeah? Huh? Those guys that stuck up the theaters? Yeah, I read about that. Well, thank you for your help, Mr. Froline. Uh, four line. Like on a golf course. Four. Ain't it dark enough yet, Tony? Only dark, huh, Tony? All right, all right. Which way's the car? In the alley behind the charter house. Uh, look, Tony, do we have to take this guy along? Can't you knock him off here? Your knucklehead, he's insurance. Come on, Lieutenant, on your face. Move. Ah, oh, Tony. 
Well, he don't hit no more. We'll have to carry him again. Go out the back way. So help me cop one fancy move and I'll blow you apart. Hey, Lieutenant, you look awful. Thanks. Shut up. Well, he got about a half a tank of gas, Tony. That'll get us to the state line and more. Yeah, we should have brought some food if we ain't gonna stop, Tony. There's your car. Hold it. I thought I saw something move. Charlie, tough boy. Now, come here. I got no gun, Tom. I don't shoot. I got no gun. I know you haven't, Tony. He can't get away, Ben. Go back to the car. He's calling. He sure is. All right, Tony. Come on out. Okay. Okay, Tom. I don't shoot. I don't have a gun, Tony. Come here. All right. Take it easy now, Tom. I come got here. no gun. You win, say. You win. Take it easy, huh? Don't do it. Get up, Tony. Please, get up. Come on, get up. I don't think he's going to, Ben. I know, wouldn't you know it? I'd like to beat Take that. Take it easy, boy. Well, that's what happens when you lose your temper. I should have saved the Sunday punch for last. Before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? <laughs> you people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? <clears throat> Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, then name and charge. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identification, call out the number. Please be prompt with your questions or identification. The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb, is written by Blake Edwards and Dick Quine, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, Tony Barrett, Dick Ryan, Ted DeCorsia, Peter Leeds, Virginia Gregg, Howard McNear, and Clayton Post. The lineup is produced and directed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. Elation and syncopation are the main elements of tomorrow night's Bing Crosby show over most of these same CBS stations. And no wonder the groaner himself vocalizes and informalizes. And Bing's guests include Tommy Dorsey with some fancy licks on his slide trombone, hot violinist Joe Venuti, and that equally torrid songbird Teresa Brewer. Tomorrow night on the Bing Crosby show. Dan Coverly speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>